Welcome into this week's Degrees of Science. So a year ago, April 12th of last year, a major tornado touched down near the town of Salado. We're going to take a look back at that storm. Yeah, so we have some very special guests with us joining us in studio today, Kirby and Mr. Cook. Now you guys are live in the Salado area and actually came out with a documentary. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today, but I want to start it off with you, Brady. You worked that event. Yeah. Can you just explain what that day was like? Yes, we had two major tornadoes touch down that day. The first one was on Fort Hood. It actually went across the area where they had a fire earlier in the year, so we never knew how much damage it did. The second one, which y'all focused on the documentary form, just out west of Salado, was an F3, EF3 tornado, did a lot of damage uh, for that storm. Major, major storm, strong storm in Bell County since the Gerald tornado of 1997. And then what was it like for you guys living in Salado? Were you guys worried about the weather? Did you have any clue what was coming your way that day? I'm terrified of tornadoes. <laughs> So um, we took shelter at the middle school and um, we didn't know where it was. And then once we got home, we still didn't know, but it was in the back of my neighborhood. So I was even more terrified, but. Yeah, and then what about you, Mr. Cook? I went home and I was watching Brady broadcast. And then that's when I saw the ineptus of the whole documentary of like tw uh, texting with his friends. Yeah, so if folks hadn't seen, you know, the day of the storm when I'm on the green wall working, I've, I've got my phone sitting there and my wife was texting me with another friend at Salado and kept saying, I just got these random snippets of house got hit, somebody got hurt, that kind of stuff. And it's the only time I've ever had to stop on air and be like, oh my goodness, yeah. what's going on kind mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah, and so you guys decided to make a documentary about this. What made you want to make this and really capture, capture that day? You have to have an idea for your state film. And we um, had a few ideas, but nobody was really reaching back to us. And so um, the tornado had just happened. And um, we kind of were like, well, that's, you know, popular and hits ho close to home. So we emailed Brady Taylor about it. <laughs> and he helped us with it. Oh, uh, and y'all, but y'all did an amazing job on it. I, I'm, it was, I, you know, what, was it already, did y'all plan to go down that storyline? that y'all ended up with when y'all came to talk to me or did that evolve down the line? No, once you had mentioned uh, the Light family, mm -hmm. we were like, oh, we can get them yeah. as well. Yeah. So it kind of evolved. That worked, worked well, yeah. Okay, well, we actually have the documentary yeah. right now, so we're gonna go ahead and check it out. This was one where I could feel deep down in my heart, this could be a bad one. This is one that, you know, is gonna cause injuries and hopefully not deaths, but something that if it continues on the track and the strength, that this could be a historic storm that we talk about for a long time. Um, what happened was in both of the storms that produced tornadoes had this happening, and it's a very rare thing in Central Texas. We actually had storms formed to the south of it that got pulled in. And as it did, it pretty much sucked that tornado into the thunderstorm and did an abrupt left-hand turn um, and ended up going straight up to Steelhouse Hollow Lake. Um, but it made it to about five miles away from Salado High School before, when it made the turn. It was on the ground for about 13 miles, uh, but if it would have stayed on the ground, unfortunately the casualty count would have probably been a lot more significant than what we had. I mean, the damage was catastrophic where it occurred, but it avoided any major metropolitan areas that could have caused a lot more issues. The last time we had an EF3 tornado was the day of the Gerald tornado. Uh, so that storm, when in the Gerald tornado, when it was moving south through this part, heading towards Prairie Dell and eventually Gerald was in a strengthening phase. So it didn't become an F5 tornado until it crossed the county line. One, it's rare for us to see storms that strong. Two, for it to be on the ground for 13 miles is pretty rare as well. And um, a lot of tornadoes that we see in Central Texas are uh, wrapped in rain, meaning uh, there's a lot of precipitation, we can't see it. This was a very different storm as people here in town could see the storm miles away as it was approaching. And that's pretty rare when it comes to tornadoes uh, in Central Texas as well. So that was something we were tracking and seeing, but it was your very prototypical monster thunderstorm. Um, I can remember tracking in that day 
uh, seeing the setup of it, that it was something that we knew was going to be very bad. I started getting text messages, and I can't read them all. It's just if I happen to see it pop up. My wife was texting with a uh, family friend of ours that lives in Salado that my son's played baseball with forever, and I start getting texts. Oh, no. Oh, I just found out some of our friend's uh, house got destroyed with this, so um, they live down in that area. All I see is the house is gone. Uh, the kid's name, he was in the house by himself. I see that, and then I see the next test, text, he's bloody. Uh, then I see another text, they're taking him in the ambulance. Get through there, and then I'm getting reports of uh, um, homes being, uh, the, the text I got was their home is gone. Um, so um, let me, I'm just gonna, I wanna make sure that family is safe. You know, your job is to tell people what's going on, but when it gets personal, it gets really hard. And, it's the first time I've ever had to just take a step back for a second and just tell the viewers, look, this is what's going on. And uh, I, was, I was joking with him and his family afterwards. I was like, y'all had a lot of prayers from people that had no clue who you were, worried about you from what they saw of me covering it on TV. Uh, our family's been pretty close with Brady Taylor and his family for several years. Um, we've been playing travel baseball with his son him and Garrett were on the same team so we spent a lot of times joking together in the stands and hanging out and and we talked quite a bit and um, staying in hotels together it was a every weekend thing we were pretty much with that family so we were very close so we we're at our older son's baseball game here in town at the high school and the game had gone into lightning delay so we went and sat in the car and that there was a tornado in the area uh, so we got on the phone, reached out to Garrett, and thankfully the phone call went through to him. Let him know to go ahead and get in the bathtub, take shelter, do not leave till you hear from us. At which point I got out of the car, looked back that direction, which is about probably 10 miles away, uh, saw the tornado beginning to form. So I went ahead and I jumped in the car uh, and started heading his direction to try to beat the tornado there, essentially. I didn't want him to be alone. My dad was on his way as it hit, because he was at my mother's baseball game and he saw it funnel down. So he was coming down our road. I knew it was a bad storm. Um, Brady's wife had been texting me, telling me that I needed to get somewhere. I didn't want to leave Jace, you know, alone at the game. Um, so I didn't know what to do. Uh, but when he left and I looked down and saw his phone and I knew I couldn't get a hold of anybody, I. I was just very scared. And as I'm, I'm racing to get there, I pass several cars coming the other direction, honking, flashing their lights, trying to wave me down. And obviously, I'm, I see it, I know. I know what I'm going into, but it, it didn't matter. I had to get there. Whenever my dad got there, there was already police there, so he just, put his truck in the park and he started running down the road. And once he saw me, he just came and gave me a hug. My mom came afterwards, like an hour or two later, and I could just see her walking down the road. When he left and I looked down and saw his phone and I knew I couldn't get a hold of anybody, I, I was just very scary. I knew that, that that could potentially, when I told him I love you, be safe, might have been the last thing I ever said. That documentary was amazing. Now, we know you guys entered it into a competition for the state. How did that go? It was good. We got um, to semifinals in it. Do you want to explain how the competition works? <laughs> <laughs> um, there are two preliminary rounds, goes to quarters, semis, and then finals. But what was really neat was last night, all four of our films were featured at the Beltonian. So oh. we're trying to take our films to different venues.
Yeah, and then what is it like being able to help your students capture this documentary? What does it mean to you as a teacher? This is the best film, group of film students I've ever had, the most creative. My class won first and second at State. Wow. But it's really special, like Kirby here, I've known this family for over 15 years, so I told the family I would get their film, get a child to stay <laughs> at some point, and this is the one we're going to get there. So Kirby, is this something that you're hoping to do going forward, the film side of stuff? I'm interested yeah. in it. Um, it takes a lot of time, though. <laughs> no. is this some, when, when did you kind of lean to wanting to do this kind of stuff? Um, I was trying to fill in my electives, so I went to Mr. Cook's class and I asked him about it and he said, go to my YouTube page. <laughs> and that was it and I was like, okay, I guess I'll just try it. And I liked it. That's awesome. That is really cool. And tell us a little bit more about the, the Salado Film Squad. We created it in 2014. Um, since that time, we've had nine state champions, 19 films wow. have premiered at the film festival. Really so Kirby, cool. how, you know, seven minute long documentary, how much time do you think you spent working on that documentary to get it ready? Oh, Lots of hours, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, months. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot. Yeah. I don't even know. It was months though. Yeah. yeah. But it, hey, the product, it turned out great. And I remember when Brady showed me mm. it, I was just blown away. Because yeah. for, you know, for high school, also the equipment that you guys have, just mm. the product that you put out, it was awesome. Yeah, I think, I think y'all did an amazing job catching the emotion of that day, because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I always joke with the Light family that, yeah, y'all had a lot of prayers from people that never had seen it. And, I mean, it gave me goosebumps re-watching it, you know, because, I mean, it's only been a year. But, and from talking with the Light family, I think y'all did an awesome job telling their story as well. And that, that, that takes a lot to try to tell both with, uh, you know, on something like that that's not a real fun story to go through. And that was really, I, I thought it was good. And like she said, the amount of work y'all did to make it look good, it looked like something that comes out of more of a professional studio than high schoolers. So mm -hmm. we're really impressed with it. Yeah, Thank the you. motion that y'all were able to capture, mm -hmm. it was just, it was so well done. So congratulations to, to you guys and all that you've accomplished. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. appreciate it.